How's everyone? Grant here and welcome back to another camera comparison video. Today I have the Moto Z2 Play and the Moto G5 Plus. And while the G5 Plus can be had for as little as under $200 if you choose the Amazon version with ads, and the Z2 Play can be had for just over $400 here in the US on Verizon, they both share similar camera specs and supposedly using the same exact Sony IMX362 sensor which is a 12 megapixel camera on the rear with a fairly wide f over 1.7 aperture, good for low light, but it does not have optical image stabilization, and it should have electronic stabilization up to 1080p 30 frames per second video. And the front camera is what you're looking at right now, is a 5 megapixel camera capable of recording at 1080p 30 frames per second. And so I thought this would be a very interesting video because they have the exact same cameras, but there's about as much of a $200 price difference between the two. And so if you prioritize cameras on a smartphone fairly high and you want to get a pretty good one on a budget and you don't really care about moto mods, the G5 Plus could be for you. But if you're just wondering in general if these two cameras that share the same camera specs and pretty much even the same camera sensor can produce the exact same photos and videos, we're about to find out. So will the photos and videos come out pretty much the same or will things like image signal processing between the two different slightly different processors uh, actually produce slightly different results? Let's get on with the rest of the photos and video and find out. And this is just a quick stabilization test of the front facing cameras. We'll just walk here for a bit and let you see what the stabilization looks like. Hey everybody, so here's a quick clip from the rear facing camera being shot at 1080p 30 frames per second. I thought it'd be nice to show you the blue skies and some of the greenery here, how they contrast up. We can even test out the zoom on the G5 Plus. Four times digital zoom there. It's actually pretty steady. I think it's only because it's a four time zoom. So I'm going to zoom back out. We'll zoom in with the Z2 Play, also a four times digital zoom. Also fairly steady. I'm going to even try to do a quick focus test here. So I'll try to bring in this iPhone, take it away. You can see how it focuses up. Both seem to be doing a fairly good job here. They both have autofocus. I believe they both have phase detection autofocus, and I think the Z2 Play adds laser autofocus as well. So supposedly the Z2 Play should focus up faster, maybe a little more accurately, but you be the judge of that. And we do a quick stabilization test here. We'll just kind of walk through the park over here. And they're both mounted to the same mount, and I'm just hand holding it in front of me. So that's a quick stabilization test at 1080p. 30 frames per second. Hey okay, everybody, so here's the same scene being shot at 1080p 60 frames per second this time. I think it's pretty awesome that both these cameras have a 1080p 60 frames per second option, especially the G5 Plus. Usually in budget devices, you don't really get to see anything more than 30 frames per second 1080p. Here's a four times digital zoom on the G5 Plus. Seems to be a little shakier than it was at 30 frames. And same thing here, four times zoom on the Z2 Play. Again, a little shakier than it was at 30 frames. So we can do a quick stabilization test here as well at 60 frames per second. I'll try to pan around as well. And there's a quick sample at 1080p 60 frames per second. And lastly, here's the same scene being shot in 4K on both devices. And this is really awesome to have 4K on both a sort of budget device in the G5 Plus and a mid-range device in the Z2 Play. It makes sense, they both have the same sensor and are capable of shooting up to 4K, but it's nice that Motorola actually enables this 4K option in both cameras. So, here's the quality on that, and we can zoom in and test the zoom and stabilization in 4K. So that's the G5 Plus. Zoom back out, and we'll test the Z2 Play. Zoom it back out. And we'll do stabilization test here at 4K. I'm just gonna walk around again. And I'll try to pan as well in 4K. But again, very nice of Motorola to enable 4K option here in these devices. Let me know what you think.
So here's a quick low light test from the rear facing camera. 1080p, 30 frames per second. I'll pan around here so you can see how it reacts to some of the different lights, brighter, darker. And we'll just do a quick stabilization test. I'll just walk straight ahead and keep your eye on the horizon and see how each of these devices are doing as far as stabilization here. And here's the same low light clip being shot at 1080p, 60 frames per second. So already at least in the viewfinder is looking darker and the G5 Plus seems to really be cranking up the ISO and trying to brighten up the picture but there's a lot of noise at least in the viewfinder. And of course we'll do a stabilization test at 60 frames per second here. And here's the same low light scene being shot in 4K this time. And again I think it's pretty awesome that Motorola enables 4K on these devices. So you can see this really quick as I pan around and we'll do a stabilization walking test here in 4K. Hey everyone, so I thought I would end this video with some low light sample footage indoors from the front facing cameras as well as give my thoughts on what I observed between these two cameras. I think for daytime photos they both perform fairly well and fairly closely. There will be some differences between the two in some of the photos but that's going to become natural. And so I thought they both perform pretty well in daytime photos. And in nighttime is where the G5 Plus again I thought tried to over brighten the photos and video and really crank up that ISO in low light to try to compensate for probably the lack of OIS. And so while the photos do come out bright and are very usable, they introduce a lot more noise, a little bit more noise than I'd like in the G5 Plus. But moving into manual mode and just turning down the ISO a little bit resolved that issue. And so I thought the G5 Plus was fine if you go into manual and just crank down the ISO a bit in low light. But that's all personal preference there. I thought the Z2 Play didn't try to over brighten the photos as much as the G5 Plus. Um, so it really depends on your personal preference there. I think for most people, they're really going to like the photos from both of these cameras, even in low light, with even with the lack of OIS, because they do try to crank up that ISO to give you that much more usable photo. And I don't think many people will really mind the noise as much or even notice it. So for folks who really notice the noise and don't like it as much, just go into manual mode, crank down the ISO a little bit, and then I think you'll be all set. So for me personally, I think at the prices that these phones are being offered, especially the G5 Plus, at the, around the $200 price point or less, I think you're getting a really great value. And I think if camera is one of your more important or top of your wish list features in the smartphone, 
and you're looking at these two phones, I would go with the G5 Plus and just save that extra couple hundred dollars personally because the differences just weren't that much unless you really take a lot of front facing photos and video and you really don't like that washed out look. So those are just my thoughts. Let me know what you think in the comments below, what you thought about the performance of these cameras. Any questions or comments, also leave them down below. And as always, thanks for watching.